Hey guys, what's going on? Tua Cruz here with Dundas. And we have a very, very special announcement yeah. today. We are moving to Vietnam. We're moving to Vietnam. Yes. Finally. Yes. After over two years of yes. waiting. So long. <laughs> so long. We can finally make our move to Vietnam. So we're going to be doing a little life update in today's video. We'll be talking about our plans for moving to Vietnam, when we're moving to Vietnam, and we'll do a little reminder of why we're moving to Vietnam. But it's a long story, so we're going to be talking out on the bikes here on the beautiful roads in Chiang Mai, Thailand. So let's go ahead and get started with today's ride. Let's go! Let's go! All right, here we are, guys, out on the road. And today we're going to be doing one of our favorite loops here in Chiang Mai. Uh, this is the Doi Kam Doi Gom loop. So sit back, enjoy the ride, and we'll be talking about a lot of things in this video. So I'll leave some timestamps down below uh, since there's a lot of different topics we want to cover. Uh, first, I want to start with a little bit of a review of our situation and what we've been going through these last two years. So uh, my name's Cruz. I'm an American. My wife, Chung, is from Vietnam. And we moved here to Thailand a few months ago uh, for a little temporary vacation, waiting for Vietnam to open. Before that, we were living in Japan. Uh, we lived there for seven years, so it was our long time home, but after living there for a long time, we decided it was time to move on and try living in new places. And the place at the top of that list was Vietnam. Uh, that's my wife's home country. We wanted to try experiencing life there together to see if we liked it and look for our long-term home. So. Uh, back in actually the end of 2019, uh, we made the decision we were going to move to Vietnam. And at the beginning of 2020, I was working full time, Japanese company, salary men gig. It was an awesome job working in the cycling industry, working with BMC directly. Um, but yeah, we decided it was time to move on. We weren't going to have this opportunity. If we waited to do this later in life, it would be a lot more difficult. So. We put in my work notice. We put in, my wife was also working at the time. We both put in our work notice at the beginning of 2020. So we quit our jobs officially in March and then we were planning to leave in May. So it gave us some time to get everything ready to leave Japan, do a little bit of sightseeing. Unfortunately, Vietnam closed its borders in the beginning of March. So we were stuck in Japan for a long time, waiting, not sure when we were gonna be able to go to Vietnam. We waited a full year. Um, I had to find a new job so we could stay there. And then I didn't want to wait there a second year, so uh, we decided to start exploring, going to some other countries while we were waiting. And that's how we came here to Thailand. So we came here to Chiang Mai, one of the best places for cycling in Asia. Uh, we've had an awesome time here. It's been a great change of pace for us. Uh, Tuing's been doing a lot more riding. She's been getting a lot stronger on the bike. And overall, we've had a great time here, but our main goal over these last two years was to move to Vietnam and so we could start experiencing life there together. And finally, it seems like that goal is going to become a reality. So that brings us to where we are now. So I'm fortunate to be married to a Vietnamese citizen. It should theoretically make living in Vietnam a lot easier. Um, but over the last two years, that hasn't been the case. If you're married to a Vietnamese but living out of the country, they weren't issuing any spousal visas. The only way to get into the country was if you were like an expert visa, um, so you had an official job or company sponsoring you. Unfortunately, that couldn't be your family. So they weren't letting family members in unless you're basically a Vietnamese citizen. So we were trapped outside for this whole time. And apparently a few months ago, I think starting in January of this year, 2022, uh, this is Doi Kam, by the way, but yeah, January 2022, they started issuing spousal visas in different embassies around the world. And so I recently learned about that, I think last month, and I tried contacting the Vietnam embassy in Bangkok here in Thailand to see if they'll process my spousal visa. And yeah, they seem to be okay with it. It was a little bit of a lengthy process, like the numbers they have on their website uh, they never connected. We called like 10 times a day and sometimes we could, maybe one time we would get through <laughs> if we were lucky. So it was a long process, but finally uh, we were able to mail in my application and we got an email confirmation saying that my visa is ready to get picked up or 
more correctly, it's a visa exemption. So it's not really a visa, but it, it's the same thing as a visa. It's gonna go in my passport. So all that's left is we gotta go pick up my visa. We can go to Vietnam. Uh, Tung was always able to go to Vietnam. It was just me we were waiting for, and we didn't wanna risk getting separated. And the other good half of this equation is now Vietnam is officially reopened for tourism starting from March 15th. So starting from March 15th, they've started getting more flights, more regular commercial flights, and also they ease the restrictions for once you enter Vietnam. So uh, now I believe there's no quarantine upon arrival. You just gotta do self-monitoring and you can get the RT-PCR test within three days of departure or you can get the rapid test within uh, 24 hours. So it's a lot easier to get into the country now. Um, if I wanted to, I could get the tourist visa and go, uh, but they're limiting that to, I think like one month is the maximum right now. Um, so I'm really happy I got my spousal visa, or I will. I just need to go to Bangkok to go pick it up. And it's easier to get into the country now, less restrictions. So everything is falling in place. And originally, we were thinking to move to Vietnam around like May or June or so. So it'd give us some time to like sort of wait and see how everything was happening with Vietnam's reopening. And, but, but with the way things are falling in line right now, we decided we didn't want to wait here. It was just added stress, like trying to plan for something in the future. And we don't know, a new variant might happen. Places might shut down again. So throughout the last two years, one of the biggest things I've learned in regards to like moving to a different country is if you see a window you got to go through it <laughs> don't wait don't hesitate because if you do you don't know when that window is going to open again so we decided to move sooner rather than later so that's the next question is when are we moving to vietnam and the answer to that is very soon <laughs> uh, less than two weeks from now so i just got my visa confirmation last week uh, we originally got our third booster shot because before uh, Vietnam required you to be vaccinated within six months, I believe, of your last shot. And unfortunately, our last shot was in Japan uh, longer than that way back last year. Uh, so we got our third booster shot here. We're waiting to get our vaccine certificate. It turns out we don't need it to get into the country now, but it's good to have it. I'm sure we'll need it again in some point in the future. But uh, the bureaucracy here in Thailand, it, it's taking over a week for them to process. Uh, not from when we got the shot. We, we, waited a week. we waited a week after getting the shot to go to the building where we're supposed to be able to pick up our vaccine passport. But since applying there, they said they needed another week to process it. So it's taken two weeks since getting the shot to get our vaccine certificate. So hopefully we'll get that before we leave. And yeah, right now we're just making all the preparations to leave. We're currently in Chiang Mai, and there's no flights from here, unfortunately, direct anyway. So we gotta go to Bangkok, and we don't wanna deal with any transfers. So we're going to Bangkok first, we're gonna fly direct. And we're here in Chiang Mai a few more days. We'll be here to the end of this week, and it's just been a rush. Like, we've had to do everything. We just booked our flight ticket last night, we booked our train ticket to get to Bangkok, and we started selling like all the stuff that we don't need. So like some extra equipment, some extra kitchen stuff. And yeah, unfortunately Tung had to say goodbye to her piano. We're probably gonna, we're gonna have to find a new piano in Vietnam, I think. It's just too much. Like with all the luggage we're bringing, we couldn't bring another giant instrument with us. So uh, yeah, it's just been a rush getting rid of everything, getting all everything planned and lined up to go to Vietnam. We gotta take the night train to Bangkok, pick up our my visa, hopefully, at the embassy. And the biggest thing I'm worried about is that our flight might be canceled. So the flight we're taking, we're gonna be flying direct from Bangkok to Da Nang. So Da Nang's the first city we wanna try living in. It's not where my wife is from, so she's a little bit more north in the central region, but uh, we wanna first go to Da Nang. We'll get settled there, find a place to live. After we do that, we're gonna go visit her family. Uh, they're up in Vien province. There's not too many foreigners that go there. So yeah, really excited for everything that's ahead. But um, the flight is through Viet 
Jet Air, which has a reputation for canceling flights. So uh, that's my biggest concern right now is we're making all these plans. We're booking all the hotels. We get the PCR test booking and like worst case scenario, they're gonna either, or not cancel, but like delay the flight. And right now, uh, this flight has actually been canceled for two years. It hasn't been running. And they're just about to restart this flight route from Bangkok to Da Nang direct, I think at the end of March. So March 27th, I believe is the first flight after two years off. And they're doing it three days a week. So we're basically doing it the next week. We're gonna go at the beginning of April. And I'm really worried because when I went to book the flight and when I went to book like the, the seats, the reservation for the seats, there was no other seats reserved. So we're pretty much like the only people on the flight right now, which is really unsettling because that's a recipe for them delaying the flight or canceling it to the next one. And in that case, we'd have to wait three days and hopefully they don't do it twice in a row. Um, but yeah, so that's my biggest concern. Hopefully things go smoothly. With regard to our bikes, we're of course gonna be bringing our beautiful Kaze Road bikes. These bikes have been really awesome to us, so we're really excited to be riding those over in Vietnam. We're also gonna be bringing our folding bikes. So actually, we're gonna go to Kaze headquarters uh, later this week. They're gonna box up the bikes for us, ship them to Bangkok, so that way we can pick them up there when we go to the airport and we don't have to worry about it. The folding bikes, we're gonna bring them on the train. So we're gonna do it the same way we came here, bring our suitcase, bring our folding bikes on the train directly to Bangkok. And I've never flown with two bikes and a suitcase. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna be charged a, a nice fee for the overweight, oversize and extra baggage, but that's okay. We can't separate from our babies. Whew. We're going up one of Tuan's favorite hills, Doi Gom, from the east side. You can go up this both ways. Yeah, this is pretty steep. We're 14% right now. Woo! Let's go, eh? Always a fun hill. And the even better part is the downhill. This is a pretty fun descent. So, uh, the next topic, let's talk about, yeah, some things that we're doing in preparation, uh, some changes and things that we're looking forward to in Vietnam. So two years ago, I started studying Vietnamese pretty, pretty seriously, I would say. I was studying a few hours every day and I did this for maybe two or three months. I got to a pretty decent like conversation level for like basic, basic conversation. I got a decent vocabulary level, but after just our plans of moving to Vietnam kept getting delayed and delayed, I lost my motivation to continue studying Vietnamese. Like, it's really hard. You don't have people to talk to. And I didn't really have good media to watch, like different TV shows or movies, especially online, like living in Japan, there weren't too many great options. So yeah, I just, I lost motivation, not being able to see the, the goal line anymore. And I completely stopped studying Vietnamese for like two years. And once we started processing my visa here, like a month ago, I just started studying Vietnamese again. So I forgot a lot, but I remembered a decent amount and yeah, my Vietnamese language studies are starting to progress again. So I'm really excited about that. Once we're moving into Vietnam, I'll be studying a lot, probably at least like three hours every day. My goal is to get conversationally, like <laughs> decent like conversation ability within like the first few months. So I can at least just have basic conversations, do basic tasks, and hopefully continue to develop beyond that. So really excited for that. And the other thing we're really excited about is Vietnamese food. Tuong has been dreaming about eating Vietnamese food for so long. And yeah, bind me, I'm really excited for the bread, the sandwiches, I can eat that every day. And the other thing I'm really excited about is just to, to see the cycling scene in Vietnam. Like it's a growing sport there. It's starting to get popular now and more and more people are starting to ride bikes. So really excited to be in that community and check out the awesome cycling there is in Da Nang. So Da Nang is a coastal city. It's right along the ocean. 
So it's got beautiful ocean views. It's got some good mountains and it's got the Hai Van Pass nearby, which is one of the famous cycling routes in Vietnam right now. So really excited for that. And of course, in the future, we're excited to go test out some other areas in Vietnam, uh, like Dalat and yeah, check out the cycling and just differences in the everything there. The climate's completely different. Okay, and what is Tuan Shan looking forward to the most in Vietnam? I can see my family. Your family, yeah. Yeah, I can meet my family. When's the last time you met your family? Sai go Ateno Four years ago. Four years ago? Yeah, four years ago. Yeah, that's a long time yeah. to not see your family. Yeah. The other crazy story is her older brother, some of you guys know this, uh, her older brother is working in Taiwan. So both her and her older brother went to work abroad uh, to save money and send that money back home. So she was working in Japan at the factory. Her older brother went to Taiwan to work there in the factory and he's still there. And actually he went there with his wife or he brought his wife, he got married later and he brought his wife to Taiwan as well to work there. And then they ended up having a kid or she got pregnant and she decided to go back to Vietnam to give birth. And she went back to Vietnam right before COVID hit and he was planning to stay and continue working in Taiwan and then just come back and visit once the baby was ready to be born. And unfortunately, the borders closed. So he's been stuck in Taiwan for the last two years. His baby was born in Vietnam. He hasn't been able to see his kid, which to me is just crazy to like have a child and not be able to see them for so long. I'm sure there's other people in similar situations, but uh, yeah, she's really excited to see her family. Uh, unfortunately, she won't be able to see her brother just quite yet, but now that the requirements for like entering the country are a little bit easier. So I think he's making a plan to visit Vietnam like later in the summer. Uh, they have a special like family anniversary date then. So uh, hopefully the whole family will be able to gather and in Vietnamese culture, like family is number one. So uh, yeah, she's really excited to be able to see all of her family members again after such a long time. I haven't seen my family in a long time either. I haven't been to the US since 2017. So yeah, five years I've been outside of the US. And yeah, of course I miss my family. I'm curious to see what some of the differences are in the US now. That's another thing we'll be able to do once we're in Vietnam, once we're settled there, once we get her her own bank account, uh, we can finally apply for her tourist visa to visit the US. So that's another thing that we're one step closer to. She can finally get her US tourist visa and finally meet my family. <laughs> Anything else you're looking forward to? Vietnamese food. Vietnamese food? I want to eat more Vietnamese food. Like what? Uh, bang me fur. Bang me fur. Yes, I can eat bang me fur in another country, but not real. Uh, not real yeah. Vietnamese f flavor? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. So family and food. Okay, so just to double check, I talked about when we're going to Vietnam. I talked a little bit about why we're going to Vietnam. I talked about our situation, what we're looking forward to. I think that's most of what I wanted to talk about on this. We'll try and keep you updated on our situation and we'll try and film a few more videos here before we leave. Maybe a video in Bangkok. We might go back to the airport cycling course if we have enough time. And we wanna say a special thank you to all of our awesome supporters over on Patreon who's helped support us over these last few crazy months when we've been in this transition, leaving our home in Japan, coming here to Thailand, and now finally being able to move to our new home in Vietnam. We wouldn't be able to do this without your guys' support. So a big thank you to all of you, and we'll see you next time here on Two Wheel Cruise. Bye-bye. See you in Vietnam. See you. Tam biet. Tam biet, yeah.